Hello and welcome to this edition of Explorer Talks. For the second time we're doing this. And the aim of these Explorer Talks is to stimulate our curiosity, but also to learn more about tech. Tech in new environments and how we can use tech. So today's theme is voice and the voice interface. Hello everybody. Let's see where I should be standing. So uh, my claim to fame is I'm the founder of a company called Conversionista. Uh, I'm just going to tell you in a few slides, tell you a little bit more about who I am and what I work with. So basically what I, what I did, I made this observation something like 10 years ago in Sweden that a lot of companies were spending an lot, awful lot of time on turning this left knob, which is about to send more traffic to website apps and digital interfaces. Uh, and then worry much less about what is it actually that we're getting out of this traffic we're sending. So I became hell-bent on helping Sweden and Scandinavia improving uh, the outcomes of what's happening on the websites. Uh, and then my company was acquired by a, a company called Curamando a year ago. And then what we are doing right now and what I am doing right now, we are trying to join the forces of these two uh, different components of optimizing the traffic and also optimizing the conversion of the website. Uh, but what we also have noticed that when we work with clients, I'm, uh, it's really fun to be here today because we, uh, to our top three clients are actually Telia, uh, Tele2, and um, Tele, Telenor, and, and Tele2. So, so you're the only one of the major operators that we haven't worked with yet. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, but what we often see when we, uh, when we are working here as, uh, let's call it carpenters and plumbers down on this level, is that it doesn't really fit into the big picture of the digital strategy and the digital change management. So that's also offer that we have with, with Curamando. So we're an agency that works with helping organizations grow their digital mar marketing and sales. Uh, but to, for today's uh, topic, which is about what I called voice, the third digital revolution. Uh, it sounds very bold. Uh, and now you're thinking maybe like this, uh, what about AI? Isn't AI like the next big thing and, and the biggest hype and everything? And I, I kind of don't agree with this. So, and, and the reason I don't agree with it is this. AI is a smarter, more effective way to deliver the same things. So if you listen to companies that are going into AI now, typically a place where you, we apply AI is, for example, in the CRM, and the interactions with the customers in the customer call center. And then you ask the project manager, what is your aim? What is the goal of this project? And they tell you, this, this, the, our end goal is that the technology will be so great that the customers won't notice the difference. And then I'm asking, something that you do at your company, which is so great but it, so that it shouldn't make any difference with what you do with the customers, that is essentially not a growth strategy. That's, that's mo mostly a co cost-cutting strategy. So if you are aiming for growth, Maybe AI isn't the way to deliver this. <clears throat> so instead, uh, let's, let's talk about voice and speech interfaces. But before we look at what's happening today, let's travel back in time a little bit, like I did with this Back to the Future uh, uh, logo here. So do you remember in the 1970s, for those of you who were around in the, in the 1970s, when the ARPANET and the TCP IP protocol came. And people were crazy. They were running into the store. It's like, where is my ARPANET? Where is my TCP IP? I must have it now. TCP IP, now, now, now. They were like a madhouse. It was crazy. And then in the 80s, when the World Wide Web come, came, I remember I was living in Budan. And I called my mom. Mom, mom, World Wide Web has come. And she was like, I'm standing here with my but what the hell is it? I'm coming on one time, I'm standing it off. Oh, and it's, just, it's a madhouse. Do you remember all this? No, you don't remember it because it didn't happen. None of that shit happened. What happened was that this year, in 1993, the Mosaic browser, which later became Netscape, was released. So for the first time, we had a useful interface to the underlying technology, which had been around for 20 years before anything happened. So the technology didn't change anything, but the interface to the technology changed everything. And then in 2000, 
3G mobile data came. There was a company that was so hell-bent on 3G services, they actually named their company 3. Isn't it amazing? So, and, and people were going, they were running. It's like, where is my mobile data? I must have my 3G services. I saw it first. No, give it back to me. It's like, all that stuff happened, but it actually didn't happen. But then what did happen was in 2007, there was a guy that came up with a useful interface to the mobile technology that was working behind the scenes. And then this thing changed everything again. So the, the, my, the thesis I have here is that our behavior only changes when the interaction with the technology changes. The technology in itself changes nothing. So if you're looking, I just want to have a little bit of a recap about this thing uh, because it, it sets up for, for a similar discussion that comes in a couple of minutes. When we think about this thing, we th of course, we think about this fantastic product innovation and the, and the product genius, product and service design genius of Steve Jobs. So we think about this piece here. But that's not actually not the whole truth because what happened when this was released, they made a deal with AT&T to guarantee the bandwidth to, um, to this uh, thing, right? And also, it had a touchscreen that was actually working for the first time. And it also had a processing power to power this graphical interface. And it also had the App Store, not in the first one, but it came a little bit later. So when we, when we think about this product, it actually, it wasn't, it, the innovation of the product in itself wasn't the big thing. The big thing was the ability to take all these pieces in the puzzle at the perfect point in time and create a customer experience around this thing. And that has a bearing to what is happening right now with voice. So I'll get back to that. So, so we're going to talk about speech, voice, conversational interfaces, um, VUI as it's uh, starting to become now, voice user interface. So I'm thinking about, I think this is so big. So, you know, I, I came, uh, I came with, uh, with the idea of being the chief conversionista. That's actually my job title. So uh, uh, that, was, that was how I started. But now this change is so big. So I'm thinking about changing it actually to chief uh, conversationista, because I think conversations is going to be, conversational interfaces is going to create such a, such a great opportunity for us. So Len, before we go into uh, anything else, let's talk about what is it really, what is, a use in, what is a voice interface? So what we think about a lot, we think about these things, and especially when you say who is a leader in voice, we, uh, we talk about Amazon, we talk about Alexa, because Alexa has two thirds of the market for these things. Right? So, that, so, so they must be the leader. But that's not the only thing. So what it really is, a voice interface, is somebody's talking. So it needs to have a microphone of some sort. It needs to have some local processing power to be able to send the signal into the cloud where all the algorithms and all the speech and voice detection is done. And then it needs to feed it, feed it back, typically through voice, but also it can be to a lock or a little gadget or your fridge or it can open something, close something like that. So that is, what a, that is what a voice interface is. So basically anything that has these things can be a voice interface. It doesn't necessarily have to be one of these home speakers. Uh, and now Google are talking about that they have now Google Assistant, what was the number? They came up with it a couple of days ago. And in 400 million devices, I think they said. So Google, so Google Assistant is now available in 400 million devices around the world. Uh, so I think, that, I, I think that the phones will be much more uh, important for this uh, than, than the home speakers. The home speakers is where, where it's starting. But, and I also think these smartwatches probably are going to be a much better interface for voice. So now if we travel back in time a little bit to the to the iPhone, you remember the perfect storm. All these technologies and, and abilities came together in time. I think the same, we are seeing the same thing happening now with voice. Because we have AI. AI, of course, is what powers all the speech recognition and the processing behind the scenes. But also, we have this thing about internet. You remember the internet of things. We've been talking about the internet of things for something like 10 years. So we were going to talk to our shoes and, and, and our jackets and whatnot. Or, or I, we're going to interact with them. But we didn't. We didn't get Internet of Things. It's, not, it's now starting to pop up mostly in cars and, and some uh, scooters and some, some of these vehicles, some of our home appliances, but not everywhere. And I think that the main reason why that didn't happen, because 
if you have a touch screen on your jacket and your shoe, it's like really hard to use it. But if you can talk to your shoe or you can talk to your jacket, then finally we have a usable interface to all the things that can be equipped with the internet. And also we have the wearables, you know, the Google Glass, the glasses, they tanked. Uh, people were glass holes and it went out of the market. But did you know that the Google Glasses are making its way back? Google Glasses is now making its way back among architects and constructors and people that work on, on sites and they need to have uh, plans and, and things that they can see when they are working with their hands in a construction environment, for example. So, so they are now making their way back. And, and there's starting to be so much processing power now in these things that we have. So the wearables is also part of the perfect storm. Uh, and finally, with the 5G services, we're also going to have the bandwidth to enable this. If you, if you are using like me, if you are using your phone, for example, uh, to, to talk with it a lot, I do that. I, I basically don't write so much anymore. I, I more or less talk everything that I do into my phone or into my computer. But sometimes it doesn't work. So it's like, what's wrong with the phone? Well, it's often, I notice, it's often the bandwidth. It's like the phone look, looks good, but actually it's the bandwidth, there's a sudden drop in the bandwidth, and then it doesn't connect to the speech servers, and then all the speech recognition is lost. So that'll be much more, better with 5G. So my point with this is that all these technologies are now coming together at this perfect uh, moment in time, and the big tech jack giants there are, are going crazy and, and uh, investing in, in this like crazy. And so Amazon Alexa, for example, um, they, they, that is the biggest f uh, source of development for Amazon. I, I think the number, if I say it correctly, they have 10,000 developers uh, dedicated to, 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 to the Alexa. And now, there's so much preaching about voice, and now you're sitting here thinking, you know what, John, it's kind of shitty, actually, and it's kind of embarrassing, too. It's like, what is this guy talking about? Hasn't he been, isn't he, out, is this John out of touch with reality? What's going on? So this is what you're thinking. This is my daughter's saga. So let's, let's see a little conversation when I'm trying to talk to Saga with Siri. Hey, Siri. Ring Saga. Religion is for men. I have my kretsar instead. Hey, Siri. Ring Saga. All that is a real mystery for me. Yeah, so... So basically, because Saga is not only a Swedish name, but also something else, then Siri thinks that this is not a name, and then she makes some joke about it. So, so you have all noticed this, that, that you're trying to say things to your, to your voice assistants, and they come up with some total bullshit. Or maybe you've, for example, seen this from the market tunis that says, order Kleenex, ordering Amazon basic facial tissues. Ah, no, I said Kleenex. Amazon basics is 50% off the name brand. I said Kleenex. Kleenex, here's the weather for Phoenix. So... Um, <laughs> So those are the things that are happening right now. So, so because we are seeing this, this is happening to us every day, then we, then we are doubtful. We think, this, you know what, this is not going to happen. This is not going to be real. This is not going to be big. But look at this thing. When this thing came, and it weighed like, well, how much did it weigh? Anybody had one? It was like 10 kilos. You had one? How, mu how much was it? Eight or 10 kilos. I think it was just below 10 kilos. And then I would have told you at the time, you know what, in the future, you're going to be watching TV on this. You're going to do everything with your bank. You're going to have your whole photo album in this one. Uh, and also, you'll be connected to people around the world with video and things on this one. You, you're, going to have, you're going to say, no, it's 10 kilos. I'm going to carry this shit around with me just to have my photo album with me. My photo albums are lighter than 10 kilos, right? So, so because, because we see the limitations of the current technology, we are unable to see what it could be like when it's really working in the future. Also, it's kind of embarrassing because when you're talking, it's, it's, you know, I'm talking to my, comp talking to this, talking, it's, you know, you wouldn't do that, like, would you? It's like really embarrassing. Like, it's almost like you wouldn't use your phone on the subway, right? But now you don't see, you don't notice that other people are using your phone because when you're getting into the subway, you're still using your phone. So you're bumping into each other with other people that are using their phone. And also, do you remember where people went totally crazy? I think it was in the 90s when they started to talk to themselves when they were walking in the street. It was like, there's a schizophrenic on the street. I must call the police or something. But then you notice, oh, no, they have this little thing in their ear, and they're, they're actually not talking to themselves. That was completely socially unacceptable behavior unless a couple of years later it was totally acceptable. So 
the, the social norms about what is acceptable behavior or not, they change all the time. So it is very embarrassing right now. And, and imagine this, if you would do this during a lunch, you're sitting together with, with a friend at lunch, and then you realize that you, you need the phone numbers, so you bring up the yellow pages and start folding them over your lunch. And then you also need to, you remember photos, so you bring out your photo album, and then you need to check some news, so you bring out your page, you do that in, over your plate, you would never do that, right? Except you do that today, when you bring up your phone, you're kind of under the table, you're checking like, Aftonbladet, then like, Eniro, and like your photos or something like that. So, 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 so what was socially unacceptable becomes socially acceptable. So here, that's, that's what I said before. The current limitations in the technology stops us from seeing what it could be like when it actually works. And since I don't like futurologists so much, I, I came up with an idea, maybe I should be a presentologist. And then I Googled this, and there was a guy that actually called himself a presentologist. And I, he had a really good quote, and I think that and he said like this, instead, rather than focusing on what might happen, focus on what you can do now to ensure you'll be successful regardless of what happens. Rather than trying to predict the future, prepare for it. So this voice thing, you know, it can go a lot of different ways, but it is happening for real. And instead of trying to understand, like, will it be 15% uh, of our market share or 17 or will in what quarter and things like that. Forget about that stuff because this stuff is going to happen. It might go a little bit slower. It might go a little bit faster. It might happen, might not happen in the way in that we think it's going to happen today, but you need to start to prepare for it. No happening, I'll see you. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one Mm-hmm. So this is Google Assistant calling. And she says, mm-hmm, right? So this is Google Assistant making an outbound, outbound phone call to, to set an appointment for a hairdresser, right? So this is mind-blowing. But then the problem with this, when all the people up here are talking about these mind-blowing things and these projections from Amazon and Forrester, it'll be so much percent of our revenue and so many units sold, and, and we are here, and we still can't get the damn thing to work here. So, so actually, the, the future projections that people make, it doesn't help us, it hurts us, because it creates a feeling of being disconnected from the, the present is disconnected from the future. So the way that I see my role in this, I'm trying to help companies and individuals to just take a few first steps of getting towards it. Never mind what that cloud over there is going to be, because there are things that you can already do here today to get a little bit closer to this. And here are those things. So where will it be successful? So uh, here's a, uh, here's a confer other conference that I spoke at, and that somebody says, said, customers demand innovating purchasing experience. Do you, do you have, at your call center, do people call you up and say, I want a innovating purchasing process? Ah, this is bullshit, because customers, what they say, I don't, they don't have time for that stuff. Like, markers there, they dream about, like, innovating purchasing processes, but people just want to get their shit done, right? So, I think in the, in the, in, in the way that we w work with our customers uh, uh, out there, I think there are basically two tracks. This uh, one that I call the blow my mind track, and the other one is called the get shit done track. So there's still a lot of opportunity in the blow my mind track with a lot of fantastic experience, but there's also tremendous potential in the get shit done track. And I think that's where voice is going to rule. And if you look at these companies, the big tech companies, and you think about what they really do, we see them as fantastic blow my mind companies. But in particular, Amazon and Google, they're really about getting shit done, not, not the fantastic experiences. You don't think about it. You just you use them to get through your daily life, and so are the other ones. So if you look at the main characteristics of voice, just to look at, a little bit tighter at what it really is, uh, voice is faster. So we can, I, we can speak about four times faster than we can type on a computer. Let's say that we are super typers. So we can type as fast as we can speak. Still, voice is easier. It's an easier cognitive effort to speak than to type with your fingers. So even if we would do it at the same speed, there would be less load on the brain. And that less load on the brain, what we can use that for, we can use it for multitasking. So we can do other things at the same time when we are using voice interfaces, which is a lot harder when we need to work with our hands. And that's 
Also, if you look at the numbers from the US and you look at the uptake for the Alexa speakers, they're overrepresented in, in, in uh, families with children because uh, they need to be working with their kids with their hands. So then it's really helpful to have Alexa that you can talk to at the same time. So where is go voice then going to, to win? So given all that I said now, I think these are the perfect scenarios for voice. So when you are, for example, when you are shopping, when you're shopping for things that you don't need to see. There are plenty of things. If I want to buy a banana, I, I, I know what a banana looks like. And, and I know that the picture on the web shop is still not going to be the banana I'm actually getting in my, so I, I don't need to look at a banana. Uh, habitual things, things that I interact with or purchase all the time. I know because they, it's the same everything. And also when I'm multitasking, when I'm doing something at the same time, as I'm shopping, for example. So I, I can shop and do other things at the same time. And also, closed environments will be very good for this, because here, if all of you started talking to Alexa and Google Assistant right now, that would be kind of a mess. So, but if you are in a conference room or a smaller environment, then it's a lot easier. So now I set you up for a perfect scenario for shopping. You're shopping for things that you don't need to see. You are shopping habitual things. You are multitasking, and you are in a closed environment. So what am I describing here? What is this context? What is the situation? What is the shopping scenario here? Hi, John. It seems like you're heading home. Yeah. Had a good day? Yeah, not bad. Good. It's Wednesday today. I thought maybe we could go through the shopping list for the weekend. Yeah. Perfect. Let's start with milk. You usually yeah. order three packages. How about this week? Uh, two, please. Okay. Bananas, how many? Uh, four. Okay. Tomatoes. Do you want ordinary or cocktail? Mm, cocktail. Okay. A package of 250 grams. Will that be fine? Yeah. How about butter? Mm, no, thanks. Okay. So. Uh, what I'm saying, you're not going to do all of your grocery shopping like this, but when you, we shop for groceries, about 80% of the stuff that's in the cart is exactly the same thing that was in the cart in last week. So it's an habitual thing that we buy every week or every second week, every third week, and we don't need to see it. So, and also when we are when we're using a, an online service, they know what these things are. So they can create a, like a default shopping list, and instead of going on the web, and searching and browsing, we can just tick things off a list. And you know what? We as individuals, we hate browsing, searching for things, but we love ticking things off a list, right? So, and are you going to be able to complete your full purchase now? No, no, no. no. I think this, uh, this scenario ends with, thank you, John. All your usual stuff is now saved in your cart. You only need to go online to complete the purchase or something like that. Now, if you want to get started, that I, because, uh, these Explorer talks, they are about inspiration, but I really, I really don't like speakers that only talks about some distant future and everyone is going to be mind-blowing, but still you go back to the office and then you have, I, like, I have no idea what to do right now. So I want to give people an idea about what to do right now. So that, this will be the last part of my talk. So what I do personally, I try to adopt what I call like a voice-first lifestyle. So this is me, I cycle to work. So typically what I do, I do my stretching uh, out on the balcony and I put down the phone and I go, I go to check the emails and if there's an email that I need to respond to, I talk the response. And it's, sometimes the, it's, it's like stupid shit that goes in there, but it's like, it was the same thing with autocorrect, so I just send it off anyway and see what happens. So, so here are some things that you can do. You can find your own micro moments. The most usual things that people do with this is like set a timer, what's the weather. Uh, one of the things that you can do quite easily is that you can use all the system commands, you know, like the airplane mode and enable the hotspot and dim the light and all those things. You don't need to go into the menu and find those. You can, you can say those to your phone. You can speak all your SMSs, all your text. You can, you can just speak them into the phone. That's a lot e easier than typing them. I typically, when I go from work, I, I, there's a couple of things that I, oh yeah, I forgot about that. So I typically, on my way to the subway where I'm going, I just speak everything into the, uh, into the phone. And if you're trying to compare the different uh, uh, platforms here, from my point of view, Google Assistant, I have a Google Pixel phone. It's a little bit better in that environment. 
than the Apple and the Siri. Siri is a little bit more disturbed by background noise and things like that. So uh, the Assistant and the, and the Google tends to work a little bit better for me. You can speak all your emails, and you can also dictate blog posts and longer documents and so So I, I almost have the tendency now that I'm in the office with a lot of people, and I need to write something long. And then I feel how my brain starts like frying because, I, ah, shit, I need to find a room or something so I can speak this because I basically have no patience for typing anything anymore. So then you can find your customers' voice micro moments. So think, if, if you're familiar with the Google, the Google idea of micro moments, that we have these like, they're not journeys, but they're micro. They're, this is another thing I need to do. We have your I want to know moments, I want to go moments. Uh, I want to do moments, etc. So you can think about the micro moments of your customers. And I just, here are a few that I came up with. How much surf do I have left? When can I get a new phone? Is the broadband up? What is my next bill? So you can find some, some of these easy scenarios of things that people want to ask you. And then they can ask them by voice to you. Instead of going into the menu and drilling the logging in, going to the Subpage of the subpage of the fold out of the click of the you know all those things that you need to do and you never know. For example, I, I was going to get my receipts from Stockholm Stockholm City for my expense report for my parking. They said you can easily find them on our on your pages on my website. No, I cannot easily find them there. Yeah, I, they are somewhere there, but they are so I need to bring out a shovel to find them. Right. So. When you do this, you can do it two ways. You can use a digital assistant app, or you can build your own app. So let's look at like pros and cons of these. If you use one of the assistants, then it's going to be visible and distributed. So if you have the, if you have the three app or the three intentions on Google for, um, uh, for, for your company, then basically the, the only thing you need to see, say, is like prata med tre, for example, at, at Google Assistant. And, then already customers are, uh, uh, um, are interacting with you. Also in these interfaces, you have some base level training. So the AI, the speech recognition, is at some base level. And also you're part of a continuous global learning. So whatever is learned in the system, you benefit from that. And it's also voice activated. So you can bring up your phone, watch whatever it is, and you can say, speak to three, uh, check my bill set three, whatever it is. So you, you, you don't need to use anything else than using your voice. You can also develop your own app, because you, own, you not only need to go with the assistant, you can do a voice app, uh, which is completely your own, but then you need to push it to customers. Then you need to, you need to tell them, you need to install this app. When you are on our web page, you need to click on the app uh, to get it activated. It, you need to train it. Uh, your learning on it is more local. Uh, and it's also, for most of the cases, it's touch activated of some sort. It's, it's, never, it's never in the operating system that you can actually immediately speak to it. You need to activate it by touch or pressing something. So the major assistants that you can work with is Alexa, Siri, Assistant, and Cortana. From, and if you, just the lingo here, you're going to get this presentation afterwards. So I'm, just, I'm giving you this so you can just get your lingo straight. On Alexa, you work with skills. On Siri, you work with intents. On Assistant, you work with actions. And on Cortana, you work with skills. And what are these uh, are going to be used good for? Alexa, of course, for shopping. The Siri and Apple, everything that has to do with the Apple ecosystem, all the different gadgets and services that they have in their system. And Assistant is, of course, the Google services. But Google, through Android, is more open. And Cortana is going to focus on the Microsoft ecosystem. So Cortana, to begin with, is going to focus a lot on, on Outlook. So, uh, they are now rushing to get Outlook voice enabled. So you're going to be able to interact with, with Outlook through Cortana. And also, Cortana and Alexa are now best friends, as they call it. So you can say, hi, Alexa, can you tell Cortana to open my email? So you can speak through Cortana, through Alexa, and vice versa, because they are best friends. So, and here's how you do it. Here's an example of how you started. Uh, Google have a company, acquired a company called Dialogflow. So, when, you're, when you want to model your, your dialog, you go into dialog, you create an account with Dialogflow, and then you start modeling your dialog in, in Dialogflow. And then when you have done that, you get this kind of tree. And then when you're done with that, you push publish, and then you can publish it to any of the four different uh, platforms. So, uh, and also Bing, Cortana, they do the same thing. So you can model it there and then publish it to, so they're trying to make it open. Um, 
and this whole open system, ecosystem is going to be more open than, than the other ones, the, the previous ones we've seen. And then you start training your service. Good. So I'm just going to, the last thing, we traveled back in time to begin with, and now we're going to go into the future. So we've all seen these. Here are like uh, interaction fails from today when the toddlers are trying to swipe the TVs. So now we get a new interface. So of course, uh, we are going to say interface fails again. So here is an interface. I went into my own kitchen in the future uh, and I recorded this video. I came back with it to, to show it to you here today. Daddy, that toaster, it doesn't work. See? What? What? Look, look, it doesn't, oh my God, a toaster, stop, stop toasting. Toaster, stop, see, it doesn't work. Stop maybe, maybe you toasting. Can, may, maybe you can try this button. I, I, I don't know, maybe, let's, maybe it, uh, oh my God. I Ew! I Should I touch it? I, I think you have to I touch it. I don't want to touch it. Right. So, so those things are going to happen in the future. P people expect to talk to everything, and when things can't be talked to, they, it's going to be a complete mind fuck. They won't understand it. So, uh, I'm talking today here about a revolution, but I think maybe the problem is that you don't see the revolution because uh, don't you know it sounds like a whisper. Talking about the revolution it sounds. sounds whisper. Thank you. Don't you know how talking about a revolution it sounds like a whisper. While they're standing in the welfare lines, crying at the doorsteps of those armies of salvation, wasting time.